Greetings from the Asian Productivity Organization, Tokyo. Uh, I'm Huang from the Policy and Analysis Division of the APO. Uh, today, we are pleased uh, to present to you in this APO Productivity Talk, a new APO publication named uh, Building Industry 4.0 Capacity, a Need Analysis of Six APO Economies. We are honored to have with us today uh, the two experts, Dr. Uh, Ern Hartmann, uh, Chief Expert of the Research, who is also serving as the Director of Institute for Innovation and Technology in Germany, and uh, Mr. Uma Shankar Prasas, Director and Head of the Center of Excellence on IT for Industry 4.0, National Productivity Council of India. Uh, in recent years, we have witnessed the, the rise of the fourth industrial revolution, or in short, Industry 4.0. And it has been said that the Industry 4.0 has fundamentally transformed the way the um, world manufacturing system operates and the, the way business functions. But to the majorities of the APO economies, actually the pertinent challenge is uh, to stay competitive in the global value chain under the impact of Industry 4.0 and how to build up the capacity so we can adopt the new and uh, emerging, evolving technologies of Industry 4.0. To support the APO member country, uh, the APO has initiated a research to identify the critical needs that the APO members have to build up uh, its capacity to fully embrace the industry 4.0 and um, the the work was completed and now published under the APO website and uh, it was done by a team of APO assigned expert uh, leading by one chief expert and six national expert from Republic of China, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines and Vietnam and um, Today, we are having the expert to uh, share with us some highlights, some findings, and some recommendations that uh, we have came up with in the study. Uh, we would like to invite Mr. Uma Shankar Prasas, the head of Center of Excellence on IT for Industry 4.0, uh, to share with us what is the uh, Industry 4.0 implication to the Center of Excellence uh, on IT for Industry 4.0 in India. How did you take up the recommendation from this study to plan for your medium and uh, long term efforts in building up the capacity of uh, India and APO member country? Mr. Brasas, can you share with us? Thank you. Uh, so, good morning and uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, uh, we, I'll be discussing, uh, I'll be having an agenda like, uh, I'll be discussing on uh, what is the, what are the various uh, objectives and activities being undertaken under uh, COE IT for uh, Industry 4.0. Uh, this, this is a center of excellence uh, which has been uh, established at here uh, at uh, India in uh, NPC, National Productivity Council, Delhi. And then I will also be discussing about what are the uh, proposed activities for creating industry 4.0 capacity in India and MC's uh, member countries, taking a clue from the research study. So basically, the COE has a scope of uh, uh, fun to function as a knowledge center for MSMEs and startups. And uh, it has to disseminate this knowledge through workshops, lectures, training program, and to coordinate with the APO for experts to disseminate knowledge regarding practical applicability of uh, Industry 4.0 in other countries also. And uh, the other uh, scope is to facilitate display of latest technology and demonstration projects, which are experience zones which are being set up at uh, uh, throughout the country, and to facilitate uh, establishment of COE in other APO countries, uh, especially in Africa. So this uh, uh, COE is having these mandate and uh, we'll be using the learning that we have uh, from this, from running this, this 
functioning of this COE to uh, uh, cascade to other member countries and especially to Africa. So uh, here at uh, COE, we have uh, uh, developed a strategic uh, perspective to take up this particular uh, uh, venture and uh, with our purpose to bring paradigm shift in companies manufacturing uh, strategies. Uh, we have a, uh, a mission to help in transforming the manufacturing processes of MSMEs through the use of uh, I-40 technologies. So our objective is uh, basically to create awareness and develop knowledge based on I-40, then showcase connected industries using I-40 technologies, disseminate knowledge to various stakeholders. This is with the perspective or with the understanding that uh, the since the disruptive technology is very new and uh, in India it is uh, uh, recently uh, being uh, uh, growing. So uh, to bring buy-in, uh, we have to create showcase or lighthouse effects at every places so that the MSME is especially the focus of uh, focus uh, uh, stakeholder that we have of MSMEs and uh, uh, startups. They get at least uh, uh, attracted to the to the benefit of uh, industry 4.0 technologies so we have a strategy like uh, uh, how we will be going through this is uh, this is the whole uh, project uh, into four strategy we have divided that is first is need assessment and capacity building and then strategy two will be create and so cyber physical manufacturing system develop a framework for standardization security and skill requirement co create multiplier effects and provide facilitate a role to APO member countries so that all the member countries uh, have an ecosystem of smart manufacturing in their countries also. The activities that we have taken, uh, uh, this was as uh, just now it has been told that it was established in 2017. So uh, a roadmap has been developed uh, for, till uh, 2021 and uh, we have taken these uh, activities uh, 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 salient are like uh, we have started with the uh, assessment of a need what kind of need uh, is there uh, across the various sectors and uh, initially we have taken uh, five focus sector in india we are we have selected 10 champion sector the government has uh, selected 10 champion sectors out of that we have selected five champion sectors to start with so which uh, includes uh, automobile agriculture implements food manufacturing government and agriculture and uh, pharmaceutical products uh, so uh, start to start with we are we are we have undertaken the need assessment of these uh, uh, sectors because uh, uh, in in india electronics and electrical uh, equipments that sector is already very mature so we have taken a, a, a mix of mature like auto and uh, food manufacturing as well as uh, we have taken garment manufacturing and all so this is a mix of a little bit uh, 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 quite pro progressive one as a, mid, uh, uh, a little bit uh, progressive one and a little bit laggard one like agriculture implements wherein it's still uh, industry 4.0 uh, has to find its place. So these are the various activities we have carried out uh, uh, during the, the, these last uh, four years and uh, in 2020 as you can see that due to COVID uh, 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 many of the activities across the across the world has been uh, paralyzed. So in India also, it's not a, 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 a different example or the same uh, situation prevails here. So what we have done is that we have taken a uh, online mode, and through online mode, we have uh, started creating an industry academia linkage. So uh, and we have also uh, taken up the capacity building exercise uh, for the uh, sectors as well as for the uh, uh, for the uh, employees or the officers or the uh, uh, employees who are involved in the uh, implementation of I-40. So this is a, a web portal that we have developed in which uh, these are the salient uh, features that we have included. And then this is the activities which has been planned for 2019. You, you, you can see that uh, the, uh, there, is, there is a directory to be prepared uh, and uh, uh, this is going on that there are there are some uh, some of the uh, experts uh, now figure in that in international and national experts and we, we are uh, uh, com uh, compiling that it is ongoing uh, uh, process and it is uh, the name of the uh, name and the uh, expertise of those uh, experts are being 
compiled in this. Then in 2020, we are planning to have uh, uh, these many activities in which uh, we, uh, mainly will be uh, to uh, uh, take up a ranking at, uh, ranking of the uh, MSME, some of the MSMEs in these uh, uh, sectors and uh, champion sectors that I have just not talked about. So, uh, and then we'll be establishing a training kit also. And this is the plan for 2021, wherein we will be actually disseminating to other member countries. And uh, uh, we'll be, we will be uh, helping the other member countries in establishing a similar uh, a similar COE. So uh, coming to the uh, research study that we are going to talk about is this research study basically uh, has addressed like what are the various critical requirements for human capital readiness to adopt industry 4.0. And the recommendations uh, are uh, mainly on two aspects that is R&D, innovation and industrial policies and uh, educational and labor market policies. So uh, let me discuss about the R&D and innovation and industrial policy, what uh, India government has done and what COE is doing. So India government has, uh, we have uh, established uh, uh, these five uh, 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 center of excellence uh, by the, this has been formed by the Ministry of uh, Science and Technology and uh, Department of uh, Heavy Industry. And this is this particular uh, uh, program is being called as SMAR, Smart Manufacturing, Manufacturing, Advanced Manufacturing and Rapid Transformation Hub. So these are the five uh, uh, projects which have been taken. These are basically center of excellence on various topics like uh, uh, some are, uh, some you, you can see some are on, on uh, Industry 4.0, some are on uh, Artificial Intelligence, some are on uh, IoT. And these uh, uh, research activities are going on as well as uh, hand-holding activities are being uh, taken up under this uh, center of excellence. Also, there are other center of excellence uh, on blo blockchain technology and artificial intelligence, which has been established by National Informatics Center, which is the government of India body. And then uh, another uh, center of excellence on industry, on Internet of Things, which has been uh, uh, established uh, uh, by NASCOM DT and Arnef in Bangalore. Center of Excellence will, uh, this Center of Excellence will enable rapid adoption of IoT technology and increase a new growth strategy. So basically the uh, situation in India is that uh, uh, people have to be made aware, people uh, or the uh, companies, they have to be made aware that what are the benefits of Industry 4.0, what are the various uh, uh, methodology or the uh, ways to implement and what are the various requirements or the infrastructure which are required. Apart from that, uh, uh, the government of India has also taken up various initiatives like Make in India, Digital India, Startup India, Skill India. So in Make in India, uh, what uh, the aim is to uh, create the capacity within the within India uh, for pro uh, production of all uh, uh, most of the equipment or most of the products. And in digital India, this is uh, creating an environment or ecosystem wherein uh, digital infrastructure is built up. The processes are uh, digitalized. And uh, in, under Startup India, it is a, uh, a scheme under which the startups or the entrepreneurship is uh, uh, being encouraged. And uh, these startups are uh, uh, the startups which are in uh, related to Industry 4.0. They are being encouraged and they, they are being funded through this uh, particular scheme. Then there is Skill India under which the skill which is required for this uh, uh, due to this uh, I put uh, zero environment or the fourth industrial revolution as we call it. So the skill which are uh, required, those things are being taken up under this uh, 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 particular scheme. Then uh, newly uh, uh, in the la uh, I think uh, two 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 months back, uh, uh, the government uh, has also announced about Atmanirbhar Bharat which is uh, actually uh, replacing or uh, uh, building up capacity to become self-sufficient. Art Nirbhar means it is self-sufficient India. So uh, there are five pillars to be addressed in this, that is economy, infrastructure, technology, driven systems, demography, and demand. So they, here also, if you can see that the, uh, the technology driven system, like uh, the implementation of 540 and those things will be very much encouraged. 
so in digital india if you see that uh, uh, there, there there are two there are other schemes also under digital india but these three schemes are very much related to creating uh, it infrastructure across the country which are bharat net which is actually connecting our networking throughout uh, the country then wifi hotspots uh, wherein you provide the uh, facility for uh, wifi and uh, internet uh, uh, so that uh, uh, various processes or business processes can be taken up then electronic development fund uh, wherein uh, this is a fund wherein the funding is done to uh, various msmes and companies where uh, for production of electronic items which are uh, used in the i40 uh, technologies uh, implementation of i40 technology that is hardware then uh, there is another which is startups india uh, under the, these are the various schemes under which this i40 uh, environment is being created so uh, one is a startup india which is actually uh, creating an entrepreneurship uh, environment uh, uh, wherein uh, people uh, the startups uh, can work uh, and they can create an entrepreneurship environment then there is one aspire which is a scheme for promoting innovation and rural entrepreneurship then uh, ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship has taken up a skill upgradation uh, uh, strategy for uh, 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 skilling 500 million people by the year 2022 so this is a very encouraging and very promising uh, scheme which uh, government of india has taken up then another is atal uh, innovation mission which is actually to foster a culture of innovation research and development then another is uh, multiplier grants commission that is uh, for collaborative research and development so and uh, the uh, last is new gen innovation and entrepreneurship labor which is for uh, spirit of creating spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship this i am showing that because the findings in the research uh, uh, study which we are uh, we, which we will be discussing uh, after subsequent to this uh, my uh, speech is uh, talks about these things that these are the various infrastructure which need to be created by the government by the various stakeholders social stakeholders so that's why what india has done that i am discussing that uh, uh, the study uh, discusses about creating an uh, environment of uh, taking up uh, r&d and collaborative research so, so these are the various activities which india has already uh, doing then another uh, aspect is educational and labor market policy because when you talk about uh, industrial uh, industry 4.0 and digital Uh, india and or or about uh, fourth industrial revolution the kind of we understand we know that the skill which are which were earlier there uh, the now the half life of skill is uh, uh, very less so these are the need of the hour that uh, uh, problem based curriculum need to be developed in digital learning environment closer links between industry and academia has to be there then uh, learning throughout the work uh, work life cycle should be there and organizing policy learning and creating a network of learning environment so i'll just uh, these are the various uh, uh, scenario under which the continuous change and uh, is going on and this change we we need to manage this change which is due to demographics urbanization globalization inequality political uncertainty and climate change and then there is gig economy also so these are the various skills uh, which we uh, which we know that uh, uh, these are required and this is like uh, it contains uh, an emotional intelligence because now we are also talking about leadership 4.0 so uh, this requires emotional intelligence creativity flexibility data literacy these are the various skills required and if you talk about digital skills then these are the on the right side if you see the, the artificial intelligence then user experience design digital marketing analytical reasoning design thinking cloud computing these are the various uh, uh, digital skills which will be required and in all these things uh, uh, industry 4.0 technologies will be used so the uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, output from this or what is the learning that we have is that skilling is the answer now because with fourth industrial revolution the old skill that i have already told that old skill will no longer be there will no longer be required a new and new is new skill has to be will be generated and your skill has to be learned by the uh, people so uh, what we understand is that higher education we have to put more effort for uh, bringing in ger that is uh, gross enrollment ratio of uh, universities need to be uh, highlighted and need to be improved so higher education uh, quality need to be improved self learning environment to be created on the job 
learning which the research activity the 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 research report is also talking about that these uh, things need, need to be created so that you have a growth mindset the companies have growth mindset the people have growth mindset so what we have done in uh, was under co is that during this covid when uh, uh, this thing the uh, the factory were closed the, the business was not running then what we uh, did the india government came out with a social and industry connect so ugc is a uh, 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 body which is looking after the uh, higher education so it came out with a guideline on social and industry connect to bring in more and more uh, of online curriculum so what uh, coe in coe uh, one of the mandate is to create uh, our CUA, our the mandate is to create industry academia linkage also so we came up with two programs uh, like education 4.0 which is which we have no one clutch that diet integrated program which will be running up uh, along with the semesters and one is satcham 4.0 uh, that is uh, uh, satcham is enablement enablement 4.0 which we say which is actually diet internship program which will be either 6 weeks or 18 weeks uh, course so these are the broad areas that we will be covering in the we we understand that we understand that uh, uh, any student or any uh, employee need to have these uh, to become a complete uh, understanding of the uh, business environment he need to have a, a understanding of enterprise 4.0 which is actually workplace automation overview like erp scm and crm then what kind of market 4.0 in which he know he knows about mark, uh, marketing technology and then uh, industry 4.0 wherein he knows about the uh, automation iot sensors and all uh, i4 zero technologies that we are talking about then also he knows he also uh, needs to know about the finance 4.0 which is actually fintech application what are the various blockchain technology or uh, data analytics or ai or ml whatever whatever things are being uh, incorporated under uh, finance 4.0 so that more and more uh, efficiency of uh, financial uh, uh, what you call digital uh, 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 finance is uh, uh, encouraged in throughout the country so and these all will be as i have talked that the the report is also talking about that it, it needs to be a project based so uh, this will be backed by a project so that the students or the university students they will be engaged into some sort of uh, live projects on which they will be working and they will be able to uh, bring out they will be able to bring out the benefit add to them also to the uh, uh, companies also to the msme so they will be the students and the uh, msmes all the companies they will be merged they will be uh, engaged uh, with each other so that uh, a mentor mentee or an adopter adopter type of so system is created wherein the uh, the faculty becomes a mentor and the industry becomes a mentee or uh, the 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 institute adopts uh, two or three uh, msmes or 10 msmes and uh, these msmes msmes can always can always fall to this uh, they can turn to this uh, universities if they face any technological problem or managerial problem so this is the way how we are creating the industry academy and linkage so what our understanding is that uh, npc as a mentor it plays uh, along with these uh, universities and uh, we uh, merged msmes and universities so that we create uh, these students as micropreneurs so so uh, another uh, thing which india government is thinking of is that we need to create entrepreneurship we need to create an, an environment of entrepreneurship so this is the uh, 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 platform where through which we will be creating micropreneurs also along with this we are also taking up uh, various capacity building and skill development uh, like uh, we are uh, through web webinars help run mdps e learning modules uh, on industry 4.0 technologies what are the various aspects of those things how it has to be implemented what are the various infrastructure which is to be required those things we are also building up uh, across india and uh, through our offices uh, we are having 13 offices across india so we are taking up this particular exercise so this is all from my side uh, i thank you and uh, uh, this these are the activities which coe is taking up and uh, on this uh, uh, perspective only i, I would like to uh, suggest that uh, the other member countries need to uh, if if they find it uh, lucrative or if they find it very useful 
that the kind of initiative the government is taking up for bringing in creating an environment of smart manufacturing and industry 4.0 across the country the other member countries can uh, if they if they like uh, uh, or if, if the particular themes or things if they can always uh, get in touch with me or uh, they can uh, see from the various uh, sites of the uh, government and if, and uh, uh, try to imbibe in their country thank you thank you so much mr prabhu for so elaborating on the activity that the center of excellence on it for industry 4.0 have taken up to um, implement the recommendation and the study um, implication um, the center of excellence has been supporting the apo a lot in uh, various activity and uh, for the uh, with a detail um, description from Mr. Brasas, you might have wondered what actually the uh, findings and the uh, recommendation of the study yet. So now I would like to invite um, Ms. Dr. Hartman, the chief expert of the research, to tell us about the methodology that we have uh, adopted in this research and what are the key uh, needs that have been identified and what are the uh, key takeaway recommendation to the readers that the study uh, have concluded. So may I invite Dr. Hartman? Yeah, good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. If you don't mind, I will start with the presentation um, right away and tell you something about um, uh, wait a second. This should be the correct one. Okay. Um, I will start with the presentation right away. Um, this, this, present, this work has been done by a group of six national experts from APO countries, and I had the honor to coordinate the work as uh, chief expert. Um, just to give you a short introduction, um, what Industry 4.0 is about, I could talk hours about that, but just this one picture, here you can see that a person can look into a machine using the tablet he holds in his hand. And of course, this has nothing to do with x-rays. Uh, he can do this because this machine has a digital twin and he is actually looking at the digital twin of the machine. And that's the core idea of cyber physical systems in Industry 4.0. Every object, every machine, every product, every tool has a digital twin and this digital twin interacts very closely uh, with the real world so that all the planning, uh, replanning, adapting of uh, automatically adapting production to changed environmental situations uh, can be done uh, in real time. And this is um, something completely new. Technolog technologically and also uh, with respect to organizing work um, in industry. Um, okay, here's a pro um, the methodology of the study um, had two pillars. Um, we had one pillar for the global perspective. Fortunately, uh, the World Economic Forum had collected uh, lots of data worldwide and we could uh, um, draw on that a lot. We could, this was very useful for us to use this uh, data um, from the World Economic Forum on the one hand side. So we had comparable data for all countries. And on the other hand side, uh, we had the national pers perspective, the six national experts, and they used national statistics for their countries. They used policy papers, national and international publications, and of course, their personal expertise. Um, within the uh, uh, report uh, of the World Economic Forum regarding the readiness for the future of production, um, the authors distinguish two uh, dimensions. One dimension is horizontal. It has on the left-hand side small or simple structure of production. Um, for some I have to go back to this. This uh, slides were in the wrong order. I have to go to this slide. I've, I've said a few words about um, 
uh, Industry 4.0, I said about methodology, uh, and I have to say something about capability. What do we think uh, capability is all about? Um, capability, uh, from our point of view, has to do with innovation capability. Innovation capability of countries, of, of companies and of countries, has to do with knowledge. And on the one hand side, that's the stock of knowledge, that's the knowledge which is there in the heads of the people, that's human capital, and the stock of knowledge which is there and can be combined in a way to make it possible to produce complex products. Some countries are able to compute, uh, produce products other countries can't produce, and that's because they have this complexity capital, meaning that they are able to combine diverse knowledge together to make unique, complex products. I will come back to that. These two together make up the stock of knowledge and two other factors as, uh, combined to, uh, to, to make up the ability to collate knowledge. The structural capital is the ability to bring together knowledge from within the company, from different departments, from uh, design and production departments, for example. And the relational capital um, is the ability to collate knowledge from outside the company. So to ch exchange ideas and knowledge with others. And all this, and especially also with, um, not only with other companies, but also with academia and research institutions. I will come back to that. And all this together as, uh, constitutes the innovation capability which is necessary to adapt innovations like Industry 4.0. I have been here. So, in this World Economic Forum report, the authors distinguish these two dimensions, as you see on the left-hand side. The horizontal dimension has on, the, on its left side small and simple structure of production. This means small countries, like for example, um, Fiji has a very small economy. Um, and simple means, well, in terms of the complexity I just explained, these countries produce rather simple products, products any country can produce. On the right-hand side, large complex structure of production, you have large countries uh, with a large economy like India, for example, and also um, uh, countries like, for example, Taiwan, which can uh, produce uh, very complex um, products. So, um, if the structure of production of a country is large and complex, it has a very good position for today but it has not necessarily a very good position for tomorrow. For tomorrow, it's important to look at the vertical dimension. The vertical dimension distinguishes between, on the bottom line, unfavorable drivers of production and on the top line, favorable drivers of production. There are several of these drivers, but the most important ones are research and development and education. Research and development and education are these drivers of production, setting countries up to be able to face the future. On the right-hand side, you see um, all the countries in the study, it's almost all the countries in the world, and uh, they fall into one of four types. Um, the nascent economies have a, a simple structure of production and unfavorable drivers of production, so have a limited current base and are at risk for the future. The legacy countries have a strong current base, but are at risk for the future. The high potential countries have a limited current base, but a very well uh, position for the future because they are strong in education and, and R&D, for example. And the leading countries are strong in both. They have a strong current base and are positioned well for the future. Um, and here you see uh, APO member countries, uh, um, put into these boxes and, and the countries highlighted in orange are those six countries which were um, considered in the study. Um, I will start with the nascent economies and I will pr present you two slides. Uh, the first slide uh, shows some general uh, um, indicators taken from the World Economic Forum study. Uh, and the second slide will show you some uh, indicators regarding the innovate, innovation capability I was talking about. I will not go into all the details, I will just highlight some strengths and weaknesses of the nascent economies, nascent economies in, in our sample were Indonesia and Vietnam. Strengths are 
the economic indicators specific for industry 4.0, not the general economic indicators, but those indicators specific for industry 4.0. So, for example, that manufacturing is important in the country, that there is some basic orientation towards ICT. This is rather favorable. And also favorable for most countries is the educational indicators specific for industry 4.0. That means, that, for example, uh, natural sciences and technology uh, are taught at schools uh, and universities. On the other hand, there are two core weaknesses of the nascent economies. One weakness is, is rather clear, it's on the left-hand side. Um, it's a very weak digital infrastructure. This ref refers to landline um, connections as well as mobile connections. And also, and this has to do with one of the drivers for the future, uh, the research and development indicators also are rather weak uh, compared with uh, other APO countries and uh, with OECD or the world as a whole. When we're looking at the indicators um, for innovation capability for the nascent economies in Indonesia and Vietnam, we see um, a weakness regarding complexity capital. That's perhaps rather obvious. These countries are not very well uh, uh, in another very good position to combine uh, uh, various knowledge bases to pr produce complex products. But they also have a strength, and their strength is the, the relational capital. These countries are very well at, they're, they're, they're very good at uh, combining uh, knowledge um, from within the company and sources without the company. May it be other companies or may it be academia, research institutions. That's the strength of these countries. When we're looking at the legacy economies, that's India and the Philippines, um, they have uh, similar uh, strengths. Um, they have also these economic indicators and educational indicators specific for industry for zero or rather strengths, uh, the same as with the nascent uh, economies. Here, um, at least India, not so much the Philippines, uh, have also uh, a very good score in the policy and governance indicators. Um, and when you look at the um, at the report itself, I will show you the link at the end of my presentation, you can, you can get much more in-depth information about uh, the six countries and there you can read what India, for example, does uh, to, um, to, to, to face the future, to be prepared for future production and in fact this uh, is shown here in very good policy and governance indicators. And the weaknesses are the same as with the nascent economies, um, weak digital infrastructure and also uh, too little investment in uh, research and development. Um, when we're looking at uh, innovation capability indicators, it's the same as with the nascent uh, economies, a weakness regarding complexity capital, a strength regarding relational capital, rather pronounced strength. Now let's look at the last pair of countries, that's the leading economies, Malaysia and Taiwan. Um, they have, of course, more strength because they're leading economies. Uh, they have the same strength uh, as the other countries uh, regarding the economic and educational indicators specific for Industry 4.0, but especially Taiwan has also a strength regarding research and development, investment and activity. And uh, Malaysia also has very good scores regarding uh, the policy and governance indicators. And again, in the report itself, you will find much more in detail information regarding these political uh, strategies adopted by Malaysia. Malaysia. Um, regarding the innovation capability indicators, they have uh, all the strengths. Uh, the, they have um, uh, strength regarding structural capital. So the, the companies are very good at combining knowledge bases within uh, their companies. Um, Taiwan has also very good relational uh, uh, capital. Um, Malaysia rather not so. Um, and both are quite well uh, um, positioned regarding complexity capital. Both economies are able to produce complex products. Um, now, I will sum up some policy recommendations we set up, we, that's the team of national experts and myself, um, regarding governments on the one hand side, and later I will also come to social partners. 
Um, the first recommendations have to do with R&D, innovation, industrial policies. And um, as you have seen very clearly from the data, uh, in all countries, in all countries, substantial investment in stationary and mobile ICT infrastructure is needed. What this, in, this in, uh, investment should look like might be differing between the countries. It might be different in essence as compared to legacy or, or leading countries. Um, but uh, nevertheless, uh, huge investment is necessary in all the countries. And also all countries, perhaps with, with the exception of Taiwan, but, but Taiwan on the other hand needs to, to preserve its, its top position. So all countries need stimulation for research and development. And what can they do? Uh, a very simple way uh, to, to engage, uh, to have industry engaging more in R&D is tax reduction uh, to, to give an incentive for R&D. But this is a very, very um, unspecific uh, instrument for more specific issues, for example, to promote specific technologies necessary for industry for zero, you would need uh, dedicated funding programs. And uh, ideally, uh, these uh, funding programs will be designed in the way that companies will also have to contribute their own funds in a matched fund approach. So this will uh, leverage more investment. Um, we have also seen that in many countries, uh, especially the leading uh, countries, um, uh, uh, relational uh, capital is not as it should be. So um, when fostering uh, research and development, when funding research and development from the government side, uh, the most effective way would be to, f to fund specifically cooperative R&D, joint pr uh, projects with companies and academia to make relational capital, to make the industry, academia, bonds much tighter. Um, what the, 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 the correct knowledge domains are, this depends very much on the country and you will find more information about this in the report. Um, finally, uh, cybersecurity is uh, an, an issue for all the countries because it's a core pr prerequisite for industry for zero and so it should be addressed in R&D as well as educational policies in all the countries. And finally, international policy learning uh, could be very helpful for, um, uh, for the countries and intergovernmental organizations like APO and especially the Centers of Excellence, uh, we have heard what uh, the Indian Center of Excellence is doing, um, can serve as hubs for these essential activities. I'm right now coming to educational and labor market policies, and you have heard it in, in uh, the first presentation. All or almost all countries almost means Malaysia is already very good in, in some of these respects, but nevertheless, they should also uh, do everything to be to, 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 to remain in that favorable position. So all countries um, should um, uh, take the following recommendation seriously. Um, reform higher and vocational education, especially uh, by introducing more effective and efficient learning methods like, you have heard about this before, like project-based or problem-based learning, and also digital learning environments. Provide closer links between education and industry because to make ed education more relevant uh, for the labor market, and also um, use cooperation links with international providers of education because this technology is an international affair. Um, although most of the countries regarded have today rather young uh, um, population, um, nevertheless the population will grow older over time and also technological innovation cycles will become shorter. So this means that continuing learning along the life, work life cycle becomes more important as uh, compared to initial learning. And also, as I said before, also in education and labor market policies, um, the centers of excellence could serve as, uh, as hubs for educational activities and for, for policy learning. And you've heard already something about that. These were the policy recommendations for um, the governments and, and agencies. Now we'll come to the social partners. Social partners can play important roles in R&D and innovation policies. For example, the employers' organizations can disseminate knowledge 
uh, related to advanced technologies and they can also um, communicate their members' demands and needs to government, which is especially important for small enterprises which will not have their own links to government. On the other hand, trade unions can also inform their members, can advise them regarding further education and training, and they can also uh, uh, communicate uh, uh, to government so that the employees' voice can be heard and, and, uh, uh, and a fair uh, uh, and a socially uh, conscious uh, process of transformation to Industry 4.0 can be taken up. Um, internationally, uh, organizations like APO could invite the sectoral social partners uh, to develop policies and standards to tune to the needs, tune to the needs of specific sectors like industry, agriculture, uh, and so on, tourism. Um, more uh, recommendations in educational labor market policies for the social partners, as far as they have their own ed educational institutions, uh, they can of course use them to educate their members regarding the upcoming changes. But more important from my point of view is uh, that both social partner organizations can help government and other public organizations in tuning and setting up education uh, programs which are closer to the world of work. In Germany, uh, this is um, uh, practiced since decades, or what we could even say centuries. Uh, here, the, both social partner organizations play a, a very important role in setting up vocational educational programs and tuning them to the needs uh, of the, of the uh, world of work. So, these were, uh, in short, all the recommendations. Um, I uh, said to you before that you can find the study online and within the study you will find not only these data and these recommendations, but you will find for all the six countries in-depth descriptions um, uh, about what's, what's going on there. And there you will get all the information which I can't give you in this short time. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking very much forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Hartmann, for your highlight of the findings of the studies. And even though all the members cover in this study are uh, scattered through three groups, nascent economy, legacy economy, and leading economies, but they have been sharing a lot of commonalities in terms of challenges to build up their capability for industry 4.0. And uh, your highlight uh, in the uh, recommendation for the COE to take up some of the educational uh, activities is uh, uh, very much in line with what was uh, shared by Mr. Brazars earlier. And now we have received uh, a couple of questions from the viewers. So uh, the first one, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Hartman. Um, is from Aruna uh, Wintaramachi. Challenge Industry 4.0. We are talking about Leadership 4.0, which provides the leadership orientation for Industry 4.0. And do you have any idea about this proposition and how is it linked to our study? You're talking about the leadership, leadership for Industry 4.0. May, may I ask if this refers to political leadership or leadership in corporations? Uh, it was not elaborated in the question. Okay, then I, then I can answer both, for perhaps. Um, um, I would say that regarding political leadership, um, well, this, this is what our recommendations are, are tuned at. Um, doing everything to improve the innovative capability of the country, to be able to master not only this challenge, but also other challenges in the future. And this has to do with this for capitals, these four aspects of knowledge, and, and uh, I think uh, our team has given some recommendations uh, regarding um, uh, what to do in this respect. Um, regarding leadership on, um, uh, on a, a corporate level, uh, on a company level, I would say um, there's a very good report, and perhaps we can share this afterwards, also by the World Economic Forum. They were looking at international lighthouse companies companies which uh, were very successful 
uh, in the transition to, to uh, industry for zero. Uh, and just from, from the back of my mind, I will uh, recollect a few of, the, of these issues. One issue was, for example, uh, regard the whole, uh, um, the whole value chain trying to integrate the whole value chain in a digital solution, um, suppliers as well as customers. We had examples where customers, for example, can configure their product online. And, and, and this already sets up a digital twin of the product. So right from the start, there is a digital twin, which will, used, will be used for all the design, production, and after sales services processes. This is one aspect. I will add a few more. Um, from my point of view, I was trained as an industrial psychologist. Uh, the most important uh, thing is to invest in technology and in people. This is no alternative, to invest in technology and in people. The really successful companies did this. They invested, also, they invested a lot in technology and they invested a lot in education. And when they invested in technology, they invested in technology with room to spare. Uh, so that the technology can also um, handle, it's a, it's a, the technology is a bit bigger than needed, uh, put in simple words. So that uh, the, the scaling up process can be very quick in the company. So they, uh, they need to invest a lot there. And uh, on the other hand, when they, when they invest in education, they do things, uh, we already mentioned in our report, they uh, invest in, in learning and the workplace not only in formal learning in educational institutions, but they try to transform the workplaces of their employees in learning environments. Uh, this can be done with digital assistance systems. This can be done with, uh, uh, with uh, learning in groups uh, in the workplace. There are different uh, uh, opportunities, different uh, methods to, to reach this. But to sum up, uh, invest in technology and in people, Invest in technology which is which gives which gives room for ramping up, and when investing in people, invest in formal education as well as in learning at the workplace. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hartmann, for for your very detailed uh, elaboration. Uh, it is uh, you you have mentioned that the key success. Uh, the factors for the sub companies are to embed in technology and people, which lead to a very relating question that we also received from the viewer. It is how to build up the industry 4.0 capacity for the rural areas and mm -hmm. uh, for the least development economy to well, which doesn't have the infrastructure at all. How can they even think about building up industry 4.0? And for this question, I would like to uh, invite Mr. Brasas, because as you know, India is uh, having uh, the last segment for rural and agriculture as well. So would you mind sharing with us your perspective about these um, issues, Mr. Brasas? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, there are uh, some initiative which has been taken by the Indian government in which uh, uh, creating an entrepreneurship environment uh, in the rural uh, economy uh, that is the uh, main focus and uh, creating a environment of uh, digital uh, manufacturing uh, has been because if you as I have also told in my uh, uh, talk is that uh, we need to create in India since this is a, a, a more of agricultural uh, uh, inclination of uh, uh, this economy. So uh, we need to create uh, or build capacity in Industry 4.0 uh, technologies in uh, creating so, uh, such kind of infrastructure in the uh, uh, agro economy. So uh, we need to uh, look into the efficiency and the performance of the agriculture economy and uh, through the imp uh, implementation of these uh, uh, what you call i40 technologies in which you use drones or you use some uh, automated equipments and all those things so this is one way you create secondly you have to build a skill uh, in the rural economy you, the 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 people who are over there uh, you have to create a lucrative environment for them so that they stay in the uh, rural area and uh, they take up uh, such such kind of activities uh, uh, in this. Thirdly, 
the government also uh, gives some uh, sort of uh, facility or some sort of uh, funding or some sort of uh, uh, um, uh, help in this regard to so that they become their they, they can take up their own entrepreneurship they can take up their own uh, they can run their own uh, uh, what you call uh, startup and uh, in the due course of time they can also employ the other people so that is a uh, 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 what you call the multi pronged uh, approach that the government of india is taking and which can be taken up by any other country uh, thank you for sharing the uh, experience of india mr prasas and uh, i have the, from the answer of both mr prasas and dr hartman it seems that there are a lot of things we have to tap upon like infrastructure skill development or uh, education. So uh, the, the, the next question is to both of you. Uh, among the APO member economy, the majority are the nation's economy. So uh, among the list uh, to-do list, which is very long, what do you think that would be the most important uh, agenda that the nation's economy have to take up in the near future? I would like to invite Mr. Uh, the, Dr. Hartman first. Okay, um, I, I would say that uh, the first step would be to identify the crucial areas of development for the country. This might be some area of agriculture, for example, and to, to focus uh, investment on, on that area. Uh, that would be the first part. Uh, the second part um, would be uh, to uh, invest in mobile infrastructure mobile internet infrastructure. Um, this could also be uh, perhaps an, 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 an opportunity for, for, for asset economies to leapfrog uh, all the um, uh, certain states of, of, of technology uh, which the other countries have but which we perhaps do not need that much anymore. So focus on focus on perhaps uh, on, on, on the mobile on the mobile infrastructure. Um, and the last point, of course, is uh, to not forget education. This is, this is for, for all the countries, um, but um, also for the nascent countries, of course. And for the nascent countries, I would uh, suggest that the, the, the core focus should be on vocational education uh, in those areas identified as priority, like, for example, agriculture. It could be also tourism. I don't know. Uh, this is something that the people of the country knows. Um, and start with, with very practical uh, vocational education uh, in, in these areas and allow for, for continuing education to build on that. Uh, vocational education will bring you so far. From a certain point on, you will also need more advanced skills uh, and you should be able to, to uh, provide this uh, in the course of continuing education. And this continuing education can also be provided by universities or polytechnics from your country or perhaps also from neighboring countries. Uh, do you have anything to add, Mr. Prasad? Yeah, I, the, I totally agree with what Dr. Hartman has said. I'm fully in the same wavelength. Uh, this is something which is uh, very uh, obvious, like uh, these are the two basic requirements that we need to have. One is education because the skill, half-life cycle of the skill is very less nowadays. Secondly, the infrastructure, uh, digital infrastructure will be needed. If you talk about, say, if you, for example, we talk about uh, EVs. Now, for EVs, you need charging. You For EVs, you need uh, internet. Now, uh, uh, if, if 5G is late or if... 5G is not happening uh, immediately. People say that 5G will come, then the, these things will be uh, taken care of. But uh, there, there are our own doubts. So if EVs can only be successful if these things are in place. So uh, infrastructure has to be there. Digital infrastructure need to is the need of the hour. So without that, Industry 4.0, because when we are talking in, in Industry 4.0 about the connectedness, so when it is when we are talking about internet, if internet is not there, nothing will. Uh, so these are the uh, basic requirements which need to be there. Then only we can further, uh, as Dr. Hartman has said, we can further, we will have a chance to leapfrog also uh, in that case. Thank you. Okay, so the bottom line for all the, the nation's economy is to focus on connectedness and uh, education for all. 
Um, there's one more question from our viewer, which is related to the current situation that all of us are, are experiencing. Uh, the challenges is brought by the COVID-19 pandemic uh, the, 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 around the world. So what do you think are the challenges uh, brought by COVID-19 to the implementation of COE on IT for Industry 4.0 strategic plan? Uh, this should be, uh, this come from Michael Mundo from Philippines. Uh, so may I invite uh, Mr. Prasas to answer this question? Yeah. So uh, this due to this COVID-19, uh, there, there are uh, this, this problem actually is being faced uh, not only by India, by everybody. The kind of the focus of this uh, COE has been uh, or uh, this MSMEs as well as the startups. And we all know that uh, MSMEs have always this uh, one perennial problem of finance. Then, uh, uh, as you may be knowing uh, in India, there has been a uh, uh, the the labor has they have migrated to their own uh, native place so there is also a problem of labor now uh, in in uh, immediate requirement as on date they may not feel like that because the kind of uh, the kind of demand that they are having is only about say 30 or 40, 50% so we have been we have started uh, talking to the msmes that and this is what we have been told and this is what we have been experiencing that uh, they have uh, uh, their their uh, demand up to 30 percent to 50 percent so they are very well placed as of now because they don't have pressure of uh, performance uh, they, they don't have pressure of uh, 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 demand or uh, uh, their uh, uh, supply being not uh, met on time so these things are they are not uh, actually experiencing and uh, we have felt we have seen in the various uh, msme sectors is that since they are not having enough uh, uh, this uh, demand, they are expanding their uh, shift timing. So they are able to complete uh, complete the uh, what you call their demand or their supply within that particular time. Though in, in indirectly they are uh, uh, losing on uh, productivity because their electricity charges are there, their uh, other uh, overheads are there. This this uh, we need this need to be addressed uh, uh, right now. And secondly, is that uh, they also uh, th this is a time when the, uh, they need to uh, think about diversification as well as for expansion. So, and for this, uh, you need fund. So, because uh, without uh, all these things, you uh, will not be uh, able to fund. So, uh, from COE excellence, COE center of excellence, from our uh, uh, point of uh, uh, this thing uh, perspective we are finding a little bit uh, uh, difficult to uh, bring in that particular drive wherein they uh, are ready or they are made ready to uh, uh, what you call uh, come ahead or come forward for implementing i40 technologies in their manufacturing process because it requires uh, money it requires investment so they obviously their first priority will be to invest or to have working capital for uh, uh, completing their work order than to uh, improve their uh, uh, or enhance their productivity or enhance their timeliness or enhance their something because they don't feel that pinch now so this is the condition which will be there i think till some more days when these uh, the demands will pick up and when they have their their hands are full with the demand then they will be looking into how to uh, cut the ends cut the ends of cost and all those things. Then uh, these things will be coming up, improving the productivity through automation, through connectedness, through industry 4.0 technologies and all. So uh, if you talk about MSME, this is the kind of situation that we will be uh, seeing for at least, uh, we, we are envisaging till December, we will be seeing experience in this thing. About other countries also, uh, I think the uh, uh, situation will not be much different. As far as the bigger companies are uh, concerned, uh, they are well uh, placed uh, to take those. Uh, uh, but they will also be there. Will not be a rampant or a, a quite and wide, widespread uh, this uh, application of these things, uh, interventions related to these uh, industry 4.0. So now, when the challenge for us is that we need to create that environment so that uh, their productivity and their performance improves. So that is one challenge which every country will be having. Thank you.
Yes, thank you very much. And I hope it's uh, help answer the, uh, the, the um, queries for, uh, from our viewers. Uh, you mentioned that the MSME is actually one of the very important partner of the COE. And there's one question to address to both of you. Is, um, SM, according to your uh, perspective, MSME of which country are actually ready for Industry 4.0? Um, we can start with uh, Mr. Prasad first for, for your view on of the Asia and perhaps Dr. Hartman can share on the uh, perspective of Europe. Uh, uh, please pardon me, can you come again? I, uh, yes, uh, there, uh, S SME in which country are actually, actually ready for uh, embracing Industry 4.0? according to your understanding no but these as dr hartman has also brought out very beautifully that in all even in the nascent uh, country also or the legacy country also everywhere there is a potential there it is not like uh, industry 4.0 is uh, applicable for only these type of countries every all manufacturing process can be uh, uh, can be uh, ha can have an application of industry 4.0 it's not like the but the, the, then uh, then then the other uh, factor is that uh, when we talk about the drivers of production so so the countries which are very strong in drivers of production which are which are well placed in drivers of production obviously their acceptability and their uh, uh, retentivity will be more towards this particular thing thank you uh, do you have anything to add dr hartman uh, I, I agree in principle, I agree very much and I would like to add just uh, um, two, two thoughts. One, one, one is that we actually don't have very good data on the, on the level of companies uh, anywhere in the world. Um, but the other uh, idea I would like to share is that um, some technologies, some technological developments in the context of industry for zero have made it easier for, for SMEs um, to, to take up these technologies. For example, robotics. Um, the, the prices for robots have, have fallen dramatically and uh, at least in, in Europe it is now uh, much more affordable uh, also for small uh, enterprises to, to, to use uh, robots uh, on a smaller scale. Um, and also in, 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 in our report uh, in the India chapter, uh, you can find lots of practical examples for technologies uh, tuned towards SMEs in the, in the agricultural sector uh, to, to give them um, uh, tools uh, they can use um, in, in, in their environments. And so I think, um, as Dr. Prasad said, uh, potential is everywhere and in some areas um, it is easier uh, due to falling prices for technologies, due to uh, technology which is easier to use. Um, and uh, I think companies can build on that. Okay, so the, 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 uh, the core point here is the potential is everywhere and it's, it's up to the um, stakeholder to take up the um, this potential to develop it to their another level and we have we are still having a lot of questions from our viewers but within one hour uh short of this session uh is uh, it's almost impossible to address all those questions but um we hope that you can get some of the glimpse of what other uh key or um critical needs of the industry 4.0 across the three groups of nations, uh, legacy and leading economies in the Asia through their um, insight shared by our two speakers today, Dr. Hartman and uh, Mr. Brasas. And for um, detailed publication, please access to the APO website, it's available there. And uh, you can also see the link to the publication under the video on YouTube. Uh, you can download from there. And uh, you can also further explore other publication of the APO uh, across topics from industry service to public sector productivity, agriculture, or uh, green productivity on the APO website. Uh, so please uh, leave your comment, your thoughts, uh, and whatever you want to share with the APO. Uh, we'll be delighted to hear from you. And thank you so much for your uh, participation today in our uh, session. And we also would like to thank uh, our two speakers, 
Dr. Hartman and Mr. Prasas for your very insightful sharing. And uh, we look forward to see our audience again in the next APO Productivity Talk and uh, for your um, uh, comments on our future APO publication as well. Uh, thank you very much, all of you, and stay tuned with the APO Productivity Talks in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.